Welcome to the Midfielder Fashion Show 2022. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Pretentious people in weird clothes. Let's go. First, we have the incredibly in fashion, incredibly stylish poser center midfielder on attack. Now, this really gets the job done, gets in behind the defense and exploits the match engine. Oh, yeah. Next is the Met Sala. They are so flamboyant and creative and just different. And you just love that Italian flair with the scarf. And oh, my goodness. And of course, after that, how could we forget the ball winning midfielder? The ball winning midfielder played here by a caricature of a Hollywood gangster from about 15 years ago wearing a red bandana. And you can't forget that little bit of creativity. How about Harry Potter's greatest nemesis the advanced playmaker full of flair and full of slytherin and strange catchphrases Potter. that's really gonna bring the show down but oh who's this customer in the background that you haven't seen because of tasteful camera work y'all bad finish time to show you who the real midfielder is huh Hey, later in this video, I am going to tell you how to get really cool mystery retro shirts. So look out for that. By shirts, I mean jerseys if you're American. In Football Manager 22, I have started to use a position that I have not used in years. And it is a position that has very quickly become my favorite on the new match engine because of all of the different things that it can do without being required to do anything else. It also helps a lot of you guys when you're playing a tactic that is really good in the FM22 match engine. This is a role that works so well in those tactics. And it's one that I was, I was scared. I was afraid to use because I didn't know how progressive it could be. To show you how it plays, what tactics to use it in, I'm going to be working in my Twitch save, which is with Floridsdorfer, a second division Austrian team. We just finished second in the top flight uh, in, well, the second year in a row. Salzburg's a little hard to beat, okay? <laughs> We're getting there. If you wanna watch that stream, of course, the link is down in the description. And we have a live YouTube channel. If you can't catch the streams, you can watch edited episodes of each stream and follow the save. The journey. And that's been a journey to fall in love with the Coralero. I know, I know I've said some nasty things about Coralero in the past. I made this video ranking roles and granted this wasn't for FM 22 ranking roles. And I put Coralero not high, absolute dumpster, get in the bin, never use it. But in the types of tactics I've found success with in Football Manager 22, it has worked. And let me show you. Well, we're going to dive into a match in a second and highlight the different tactical movements, but let's click on the guy that's going to be doing those movements. His name's Paul Nolan. We found him in the amateur divisions of the United States at 18 years old. Now he's 20. And as you can see, looking at his attributes, he is not a sensational player. We're in the Austrian top division. We're in Champions League best place qualifying. We made it to the Conference League knockout stages. At those level of competition, this guy is not a great player. He's a good player. He's got potential. He's going to get better. We like him and he does certain things very well. And those certain things are your know, teamwork, stamina, and just freaking working hard and being a pretty darn decent athlete and just raw, unfiltered, unadulterated aggression which cannot be underestimated. And also understanding the tactic. Now, I know a lot of people in Football Manager 22 have been going for something that looks like this, or I've seen a lot of people take the, you end up with your narrow midfield and then maybe you're playing with some wingers here. You know, screw it, we have an animating department. I can animate this. Where you're playing with three central midfielders, two wingers and a striker. Maybe you're playing a 4-3-3, but trying to overwhelm the midfield has been a very successful tactic in FM22 for a lot of people. And when you do that, you are giving up defense, not through the middle, but in the wide spaces. So what does a Coralero do? A Coralero can exclusively play on support and their only instruction is to play wider. This means instead of filling space vertically, they're filling space primarily laterally, but they are given some freedom to move around and basically occupy midfield spaces that they find to be vacant. Here's what I'm talking about. I started using this tactic towards the end of the season. So we're gonna drop into a match against Admir Wacker Moodling on the road. This is a team mid-table opponent and talent wise, we are essentially a mid-table team. So we've done a very good job putting ourselves into this position. Let's pick things up on this play just six minutes in. Nothing particularly special is gonna happen here, but keep an eye on Paul Nolan, who is up as part of a set piece. He's our Carolero. Nolan's gonna drop into this space and the advanced playmaker ahead of him in that tactic, remember Vanderhorst was up here, is going to drop in to receive the ball. You'll immediately see Nolan try and stick 
in that far advanced position. As Vanderhorst drops it off and begins to move up the field, Nolan then trades places with him. Now, this is something that, while it's not in the individual instructions that are levied by the role, we see that Carl arrows are designed to fill different spaces and lines in the midfield. And so when you have a different midfielder switch out of a position, your Carl Arrow, your, your, your Paul Nolan is going to flip into that top position and then drop back. They are filling the space that's left by everybody else. Nolan looks to make a run into the box, but he stops as Nick Lima makes that run into the box and provides the cover on the backside. But what happens when the alternate situation is going on? Let's pick this up from a, a turnover, a long ball that Spear has is gathered. We're in the 15th minute and we'll track Paul Nolan again. He's over here on the far side of the field. Now, Nolan with the stay wider on that side is not going to come across that halfway line really at any point when other midfielders uh, that you see playing centrally will come across that halfway line. This means if you do have a lack of defensive solidity over here, it's a problem. But it also provides excellent, excellent width, especially if you have very aggressive attacking inverted wingbacks. That Carolero is not going to be as aggressive as a Metzala looking to get into this space all of the time. They're not trying to get up here. They're just setting the width of your team so that inverted wingback can roam free, but you still have somebody to switch the ball to. And you'll see as this play continues, Nolan's going to drift towards Lima, but he's not going to crowd Lima, who's playing a fullback on attack. Once Nolan receives the ball, Lima goes forward, then Nolan pushes farther into the wide area. We're about to see why I absolutely love Carleros in this match engine, because with all that responsibility of setting the width, with that defensive responsibility, with the filling the different gaps in the midfield that my two different fluid playmakers are, are vacating constantly, this also happens. Uh, one of my forwards, Raul Asensio, is going to drop in and receive the ball. And both of my forwards are on advanced forwards. So if you didn't know this, advanced forwards are dropping in to receive the ball more, makes the game more fluid overall. Paul Nolan just takes off. He fills that number and scores what could easily be described as a disgusting goal. But I would argue that he actually doesn't need to stop here. And then with a better ball and a better player to take a touch into space instead of a bad touch that sets up a tough shot, that is an attack into space the defense is not ready for. And that means a Carolero is very dangerous in fluid setups, especially when you have forwards that look to drop in even more often than advanced forwards. And we have more clips that we want to show you to break this down, tell you how to use it tactically. But I, I do have something really, really awesome because we've been doing the sponsorship with Mystery Football where we you, you, you get shirts. You get shirts for really cheap, officially sourced shirts in random mystery boxes. Well, now Mystery Football has started a retro portion to their site. They've gotten enough resources together. They're incredibly excited about it. And you get a mystery retro shirt and they have shipped the mystery retro shirt all the way to me here in New York. And we're going to open it right now. And it is going live 30 minutes after this video is released, which means you can get a retro mystery shirt for yourself 30 minutes after this video comes out. They've synced it up with this video to have the retro shirts officially come out 30 minutes after this video is released. And, and finally, I honestly didn't put off filming this video very long because I wanted to open the retro shirt. It comes in your normal mystery football packaging that you've seen on this channel before. I still don't know how to open a package. If you want to get those retro shirts, of course, the link is down at the top of the description. There we go. Ah, uh, what do we have? <laughs> oh no, oh no. We had such a long save playing against this team of Portugal. We, we just got their current kit and now we've got their retro kit. It comes in this white tissue paper when it's the, the retro kit here, but I don't know if you can see who it is. It's a, it's a very nice kit. It's a retro Porto kit. It's a sick, sick retro Porto kit. One of our biggest rivals. And of course, we get them twice <laughs> mystery football. But this is an amazing retro kit. Got the Adidas over there. I mean, that little uh, the felt Adidas up here. I am not a kit guy, and I still love this site. So thank you guys. Check out the retro shirt link in the description. I will be using it religiously. Totally remember seeing Jackson Martinez wearing this. For some reason, that's who this shirt evokes for me. I don't know if you wore this exact sponsor but oh yeah you get this nice little card in case you don't know who it is boom i tell you now we've gone to a different match at our home stadium the, the fock plots to show how this works breaking the press since that's such an important part 
of the game. So I play with a deep line playmaker, as you see here. That Carolero sitting out wide, they're not sitting that wide, but it's a bit of an awkward position to defend. If you have a deep lying midfielder and then a Carolero, that Carolero is actually going to force a midfielder, especially in a midfield two, or sometimes even in a midfield three, to make a decision to go out and defend them instead of somebody else. And if they don't, then it could work like this. We play it out short with Blackman to Spear. You've drawn a defender. Nolan's dropping into this space. Now, Nolan being here can either advance the ball to one of my midfielders, knock it back to the other one of my midfielders, but it works as a very comfortable three-level connection without trying to build a spine right up the middle. You go out, and then you go back in. And very quickly from here, we're able to progress the ball. Now we watch Nolan. He is going to continue to push up the field, but the moment that Vanderhorst decides to push up, Nolan retreats. Vanderhorst is the attacking midfielder and Nolan will cede that spot to them, but the Carolero will look to fill all of those available opportunities. While having more positional responsibility and tactical reliability than somebody like a box-to-box -box midfielder who you will see do similar stuff. But box-to-box -box midfielders have that dream run where they get themselves into the box. But what if you have two strikers like I do in this instance? And instead of getting that pressure running into the strikers, you'd rather get that pressure somewhere else. But you want more defensive responsibility or basically any defensive responsibility outside of Matsala. You don't want somebody that ends up in the channel every time. Well, let's take it from rolling the ball out at the back. And our boy Paul Nolan, he's right over there. Paul Nolan providing that width, that option for trying to break the press, but we decide to skip him. Turns out it's a bad idea. So Paul Nolan just pumps the brakes, takes off defensively. And the moment we win the ball, Paul Nolan is looking to be progressive again because Vanderhorst was not in an advanced position. All of a sudden, you would never think that this is a Corralero with no special player instructions. It's a hustle position. And that hustle position has forced the left back all the way down. And once that left back is forced all the way down, that left back is picking up my right striker, Pablo Rodriguez. Watch that again. So in this counter-attacking play, you have the left back. The center back realizes he's gonna be overwhelmed numerically. You've got one center back that's committed to Asensio. If we had a better player than Raul Asensio, who look, I love, but he's not great. This would have been an immediate pass and we would have been in. The left back, shifts over to try and cover, and now is picking up Pablo Rodriguez. We have a complete monopoly on the far side of the field, and because of that, because Vanderhorst is now filling for this striker, because Asensio is back here, Nolan's in the attack. So let's watch what he does on this far side of the field. He puts pressure on the left back, and then all of a sudden, he's the overlap. He's the extra guy in the box that provides a finish on the road against Salzburg. Now, the final 14 games to the season that Nolan played in after I switched this formation, he scored four goals. One of them was that outright banger you saw, but the other three were cashed in at close range. And based off the ability that you see, he's not an incredibly accomplished finisher. At the best, he's decent for a midfielder at the level we're playing at, and he was absolutely prolific playing in what most would consider a very defensive role. The Corralero becomes the Ying to the Yang. You can't trust a box-to-box -box midfielder to be as responsible defensively as a Corralero because a Corralero has more positional demand, right? The box-to-box -box midfielder floating all over the place, a Corralero has more positional demand as it's going to be in that half of the field, in that lateral space. But it is still a very threatening position offensively. And so you are giving up very little offensively in order to get that tactical understanding. Dual-sided Corraleros would be very dangerous, and it is the yin to the fluid yang. You can play with multiple playmakers as long as you have a Corralero that is filling the spaces around them. Don't play with two playmakers in the same line. That still bothers me. But I play with one playmaker up here and one back there, and the Corralero just occupying the spaces that those guys have vacated, trying to find the ball. It's a counterweight and one that you can put your best all around player in. Use it wisely, have fun with it. If any extra tips on how you're using your Carraleros, how your tactic is working well, or how to best make a great central midfield, hit the comments and then go read them if you want more information on this sort of stuff. Have a great rest of your day. Happy FM-ing. Wait.